Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darylin and today I just wanted to like chat about the state of the plant hobby, the state of the plant market and kind of give you a little bit of like insight into what it's like to be like a YouTube houseplant creator and kind of maybe give you some context on whether or not it's a good idea to start a houseplant focused YouTube channel in 2023. So I guess let's just get into it. Kind of the first thought that's probably on everyone's mind lately is that houseplant prices have crashed completely crashed other than like a few exceptions like there's a few kind of like specific groups of plants where prices are still pretty high i mean like for the most part things are way cheaper than they ever used to be i mean even as recently as like 2021 there are certain plants that were like 90 percent more expensive like a good example is actually the philodendron strawberry shake like this plant used to be like hundreds of dollars for a small specimen and i see them for sale in groups all the time for like 50 bucks you know for something that looks pretty nice and um yeah like there's actually like a facebook group specifically for strawberry shakes that ended up like changing its name to something that was like more general and like more broad because the group had just basically died like there was no almost no activity in it so they needed to branch out and you know do something else you know and they made it like more broad like a more broad group for like more types of variegated plants but I just think that's so, I don't want to say funny, but it's just so interesting, like how things change. I guess it like it shouldn't really be that surprising because when you have a commodity that's in high demand that can self-replicate in perpetuity, like it makes sense that the supply is going to just absolutely skyrocket. And um, yeah, like there's so many people in Facebook groups that have been for a long time selling rare plants, trading rare plants. And um, right now is a really, really good time to get your wish list plants. What's happening right now is that we're en we're entering like the late stages of this like boom, and prices are pretty much at like a race to the bottom right now, like prices and quality. Eventually, what's gonna happen is there's not gonna be enough profit to make on a lot of these plants to make it worthwhile for a lot of people to continue selling them and they're going to stop. And so I think eventually what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of plants that start to get rare again. You know, it's a great thing that a lot of popular ones are like super hyper available right now. I think that window is going to close, especially plants that are more obscure. Like the classics are always going to be like up and around. Like I think you'll always be able to find like pink princesses and like album monsteras and Thai constellations and, you know, especially philodendrons that are so easy to just like snip and root in water. But I don't think it's going to last forever. Like eventually people are just going to be like, this is more trouble than it's worth. If you're looking for a wish list plant, like if you have a dream wish list plant on your list, like I would maybe make a concerted effort to find it now and see if you can find it for a price you're happy with because I genuinely don't think that we're going to be in this state of just like hyper availability uh, forever and maybe just like not even much longer at all. So that's just my tip, my hot tip for you there. And like th you're gonna find the best deals for sure in like social media groups, Facebook groups, your local plant groups, local plant community, uh, Instagram, a lot of times like plant shops will have like live purges where they'll sell things for ridiculously good deals. Like highly recommend poking around and like seeing if you can find the deals because they're out there, they may not be forever. But yeah, I mean like part of this is that there were just like so many people who saw plants as a quick way to make extra money. They're also starting to crack down on uh, like payment apps like Venmo. Um, they lowered the amount of money like quite significantly for when Venmo has to provide tax documents. It used to be like $20,000 before you had to like report it as income. Now it's like 600. So a lot of people are probably kind of just like over it if they're gonna have to like pay taxes on this like extra money, uh, which, you know, like you should definitely be reporting all of your income on your taxes. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not worth it. If for some reason you were to get caught but it is just starting to become less of like this like easy quick way to just you know print money essentially like back in the day like you do purges and like 
every single thing you posted would, you know, people would pay like literally whatever for, and there'd be four or five people being like, sold next, sold next. People PMing you being like, do you have anything else for sale? Do you have anything else for sale? It was really wild. It's not like that anymore. And, um, and so I think people are just going to probably, there's just not going to be as much, much available at some point. So get your plans while you can. But yeah, I don't know, like something that's kind of interesting that maybe uh, if you aren't in Southern California or like near a major city that like maybe you might not be aware of is another reason that a lot of plants got super common recently is because Equigenera and Tropicals plants, they're both um, like vendors from Ecuador, they started coming to the States and doing just tons and tons of plant pop-ups. Like they were pretty fun. Like, don't get me wrong because you got to like meet other plant people and like they would have such amazing specimens there. I mean, and they're, you know, like pretty like reasonably priced for, th for the time. And, uh, but they did them literally everywhere. Like in Southern California, there were so many pop-ups and so many aeroid sales at like orchid shows and botanical gardens. And it, it got to the point where like, they were just everywhere and the plants are, are just so much more accessible here any like than they ever used to be like equigenera has a nursery in bonsal now which is like north of san diego i don't think it, i don't know maybe like an hour from here so like there's a whole equigenera nursery in southern california now that never used to be here so things are just like hyper available and so that's one of the reasons why like a lot of these plants are just everywhere but at the same time that you know these big plant sellers from from ecuador decided to like cut out the middleman and sell to American consumers directly. Um, and it, not just America, like tropicals, I know they would have like international sales, like to different places all over the, all over the world. It's, it's wild. It's like legitimately an empire. At the same time, like the uh, interest in plant in like hoarding, you know, large quantities of plants uh, kind of has been declining. And so I think like prices are only going to go down to, it's just, it's just inevitable. So what I'm trying to tell you is prices are going to continue to go down because there's so many people who have been selling and then also people who are like moving on from the hobby like I see it in groups all the time people purging their entire collections people getting rid of their cabinets their grow tents their plant enclosures their supplies their pots like just so many things that people are offloading and you can get them for so cheap like why would anybody like pay you know full price for anything when there's just everywhere people are just like begging people to take plant supplies off of their hands so it's it's interesting time the hobby is definitely contracting which kind of brings me to the next thing i wanted to talk about which is is it a good idea or like worth your time to start a houseplant YouTube channel in 2023. So this is something that actually Kaylee Ellen brought up in a video like a month or two ago. But she was a little bit like evasive about like a definitive like yes or no and these are the reasons why. So I'm gonna like kind of tell you the things that like I guess content creators maybe don't want you to know. And that is that content creation <laughs> is kind of like a decentralized pyramid scheme. Like there's always like a few people that make it and then they, because they made it, try and make it sound like anybody can. Uh, and that is like really, really not the case. Like houseplant content creation is a really, really small niche. And like some of these plant influencers based on the number of views they get, like I don't know how they pay their bills <laughs> because I know how much like videos make, it's not very much. YouTube does not pay very much uh, for views. I think you do make a little bit more if your video gets the views quickly, but like my biggest videos, you know, the, there I have a few that have made like 15,000 views. For the most part, for me at least, YouTube has paid me about $10 per thousand views. So like $150 for a video that gets 15,000 views. Like, I mean, that's not very much because it's such a small niche like i just i don't think that like going into it with the goal that you're gonna make it your job is realistic and so what i would say is that if you feel like called and compelled to make a plant youtube channel i would give you the following kind of advice like you need to be really really passionate about learning how to edit video and dealing with equipment and dealing with like 
figuring out how to fix issues, audio, computer, camera. Like I did not think it was going to be as technical as it is. And I honestly like don't know how I was able to do as good of a job as I have. Like my channel is like really not like anywhere near the pinnacle of what plant content creation can be. It's just a little, you know, hobby channel, but like it was rough. Figuring out how to do audio was super, super rough for me for a while. And it was just not the kind of thing that I liked doing. And like, there are days when I really do not want to edit videos. It's not something that like everyone is going to enjoy. And for every like minute of footage that gets put onto social media, it's probably like 10 or 15 minutes of editing. Like, you know, a 15, 20 minute video can take a couple hours to edit if you are, you know, depending on what you're doing. And if you don't like editing, then you're not gonna enjoy that time. So keep in mind, like that's the majority of your time as a content creator is editing. Um, I also would highly, highly, highly discourage you from investing really any amount of money <laughs> in equipment or anything on the front end uh, because you may legitimately hate it. You may hate video editing and you may really find that the amount of like time and effort you have to put into it is just not worth it. And then you're stuck with all this equipment that you spent money on. Like I would highly, 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 highly encourage if you want to make plant content to start with Instagram reels and YouTube shorts because they're just much less of a commitment. They're quick and you can do it pretty much for free without buying anything as long as you have like a phone and so all you need there is your ideas and so if you want to make plant content I 100% encourage you to make reels and, and YouTube shorts like a hundred percent. That's a great, that's a great hobby. That's a great way to kind of like engage in the community, to test out the waters, to see if you like it, to see what kinds of ideas you have that like take off and get traction, like build a following on Instagram. You know, there's a couple of people that have recently started YouTube channels that came to YouTube from having big Instagram followings. And you know, they've been really, really successful, which is great. But the other thing is too, though, is that like you need to find a way to distinguish yourself from other people because believe it or not, the YouTube algorithm is sneaky and it really only shows you a very, very small fraction of the channels in any niche that you're interested in in particular. It's very, very precise. Um, but nobody is more chronically online in the plant hobby than me. I promise you this. And there are actually so many plant channels out there so many and a lot of them are very small and get maybe like 10%, 5% of the amount of views as they have subscribers on each video. So let me break that down. Like that means that if you know, they have 10,000 subscribers, their videos are getting 500 views to a thousand views per each video. That's tiny. So yeah, there's like any number of reasons like why that, that can happen to people. But like, just think about it. Like just because you get subscribers does not mean that you're going to get views and, and views is what pays. <laughs> so I would highly recommend not investing like an overly, uh, significant amount of time in plant content creation. But yeah, that's just, you know, things to think about is that there's a lot of people making plant content in a very small niche that are already not really doing that well. Like the people who are the big influencers in the plant niche are the people that started making plant content in 2018 and already kind of have their own brands, their own followings. Like there's not that much room for new people to come in and then like keep making the same kinds of videos that you know those popular people already have covered like you ha if you're gonna come in at this point like you have to have some very new unique refreshing point of view some sort of like different approach maybe you have like a really amazing you know conservatory like i but the thing is though is that it's like what's really difficult is to translate like a lot of views into like consistent viewership because there's lots of channels that 
they'll have like one or two videos that get a ton of views considering the size of their channel, but then like they can't translate it into like consistent viewership. So like if you're going to get into plant content creation now, like I would do it with zero expectations. I wouldn't spend any money on it. I would start with reels and shorts and I would start with like cultivating your Instagram and like think about like, what do you want to get out of this? Do you want to like meet other plant people? Do you want to, you know, maybe find people to trade plants with? Do you want to, you know, learn more about like the community, like just kind of like widen your net a little bit? Because if you are going into it hoping that eventually the like plant content creation could be your job like I, unfortunately i have bad news for you that's probably not going to happen <laughs> because content creation just doesn't pay very much like youtube does not pay very much and then also the other thing too is that you know maybe you're thinking well darlin like brand deals and and you know there's other things like, like merch and, and whatnot yeah there's other things but like you know the brand deals they really don't start being worth it for quite a while like when I got into it I thought like oh you know it'll be so cool to have brands send me stuff for free but it's like it's never actually free a lot of times when brands contact you and they're like we'd like to send you free products but we want you to make x amount of content promoting it and it's like well that is a lot of work like hours wise for something that like I could just buy for myself like I would probably make more money if I just bought the product for myself and then reviewed it and then a lot of these brands like they don't pay you um until you're a pretty big account so I don't really know I've never done a paid brand deal before but I don't think that brand deals is something that is super easy to get to that point. So yeah, and then another thing to, to just understand is that like some of these really big YouTube channels, not even just plant channels, but just big YouTube channels in general, like the people like they get their start because they're already part of a community. Like when I posted my first video, I was in like a plant group where it was like a whole bunch of people that were friends. It was like a community. And I was allowed to post my video in that group and be like, hey guys, I started a channel, go check it out. Most plant groups have a zero tolerance policy for like self-promotion. And like, if you start a YouTube channel and try and post your video in plant groups, like they'll delete it. And if you do it, I think you get, you know, sometimes you get three strikes, they kick you out. So it's really, really hard to promote your content um, outside of just like making good content and the algorithm and like hashtags and like, I was able to get that, like a few hundred people were able to watch my videos. I was able to post a few. And then I got really lucky where I was able to appear on a bigger YouTuber's channel when I was like a tiny channel, which like shouldn't have happened, but I was able to do that. And then I got a shout out from Wild Fern like a year ago, which I got a few hundred subscribers from that. And then like from there, I just kind of started, I guess, I don't know, like I've been really lucky and that I've cultivated like a little bit of a viewership where people like want to watch my videos. But yeah, like it very easily could have gone the other way if I hadn't had any of those kind of like lucky things. And you know, I could just be like throwing content onto the internet, you know, into an echo chamber of like nobody they're listening. So like some of these really big channels, like they get help along the way. I know of a few like pretty successful channels, like outside of the plant world that uh, became successful because the creators started in like Reddit communities. There's a lot of forums on Reddit where people like literally just like, just like discuss and like analyze things. And yeah, there's a couple of creators like in the, in the like the a song of ice and fire communities where they started out in reddit forums and then started their channels um to like basically make videos about their like theories about their favorite books uh, there's other like cultural commentator kind of kind of things and like you know if you're not already part of a community and like you don't already have a built-in audience like like a reddit forum or instagram or tiktok or like some other platform like youtube is the hardest platform to build a following on like they i think they say that like 1000 youtube subscribers is equivalent to 10000 tiktok subscribers or, or i don't know fact check that i don't know if that's that's right but it's basically really difficult to 
get people to watch YouTube videos, essentially. So if if none of that phases you and you're like, no, Darylin, you don't understand. Like I have like so many ideas. I have so much stuff that I want to talk about. Like I want to make YouTube videos, like go for it. I'm just, you know, I just want to be real with you guys, I guess. That's all, that's all it is. It's just, I just want to be real. It's tough. Like it, it's a lot of time. And like, sometimes I get a little bit burnt out on it because it's a lot of time and it's a lot of sacrificing time that you could be using to do something else. So if you have questions though, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. Like I, I'll get, I'll tell you, like, I'll tell you about like what I use in my experiences. If you are interested, I wouldn't expect to start a channel and have that be your only platform in 2023 and have, and be doing long form content only and have that be successful. And by successful, I mean like cultivate a viewership to the point where, you know, you're able to make a return on your investment, like make money on it. I think I've kind of like said this multiple times at this point, but reels, shorts, Instagram, that, you know, don't spend money. <laughs> like that's all I think the way to do it. And then once you've got, you know, enough of a following on in those places that you feel like you want to mess around with making long form content, like, yeah, go for it. It's just, you'll be surprised how it's just like harder than you think it's going to be. Like video editing is really hard. Like I am not even that good at it. You guys, like I'm really not that good at it. As you can probably tell from watching my videos, like total amateur hour over here. Um, if you are a video professional or a, prof or like some sort of content professional and you want to cultivate your own, you know, following, uh, yeah, I mean, really high quality things tend to get good amounts of views. I guess the long story short of this rambling is that content creation is something that you have to put a lot more into it than you get out of it. And a lot of times channels take a really, 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 really long time to be successful. The houseplant niche is already very hypersaturated. It's kind of the declining community. So I don't know that I would say it's like really worth it to like put the amount of energy that it takes to make a long form content YouTube channel is really worth starting in 2023. But like I said, you know, if you really want to learn how to make videos in a, in a situation that's like very low stakes, like, yeah, making plant videos is a great way to do that because for the most part, like people are really nice. You're not going to get like canceled like if you say something like a little bit like off-putting about plants like you're not gonna get like canceled and dragged across like you know the internet uh in this community like you know people can get a little spicy sometimes but for the most part like everyone's pretty nice and it's very low stakes over here so that actually could be a good reason to start a houseplant channel like learn to film learn to edit learn to like be on camera um and you know, make some friends, but I wouldn't have expectations beyond that, to be honest. Like it really just isn't like, there's just not like that much meat left on the bone in this niche. There are like people who used to be like big creators in the houseplant space that are that are just not making videos anymore. Like like Jimmy from Legends of Monstera, you know, y'all still ask me about him. He hasn't made any plant content in a really long time. Like right after I appeared on his channel, like in late 2021, like he stopped posting because he just wanted to do other things. He wanted to travel. He actually has a travel YouTube channel now. There, there there were a few other big ones that, that took really, really long breaks and then like their viewership just never really picked back up again. Like there, there was one like Alicia's Leaves. I used to love her videos and she isn't on YouTube really anymore. I haven't seen anything from her. Lulu's Leaves, like she popped in and said, hey, like a few months ago and like that's kind of been it. Trying to think of who else there were there's been a few people that are just they're just stop posting like oh i remember the big one betsy begonia betsy begonia just like completely peaced out and she officially was like i'm not making any plant youtube videos anymore i started a podcast follow me at heavens to betsy um her podcast is hilarious by the way like if like you should go listen to it if you liked her YouTube channel. She's really funny. But like, yeah, like she had 50,000 subscribers. Like her plant channel was her full-time job at one point and she's just, just over it, done. So yeah, I don't know. Those are, that's my thoughts on that. Um, Sorry if this was a little bit rambly. 
but but yeah it's an interesting time for the houseplant hobby and it'll be interesting to see where we are in like you know a couple years with it i'm just like chilling like i don't think i'll ever like be done with plants like completely i really do intrinsically love plants um but i do have a love-hate relationship with youtube videos mostly just the editing of them it's like it's not like super fun you guys like editing videos is like i zero out of ten <laughs> Oh man, I probably shouldn't. I should probably take that out. Don't get me wrong. I'm super grateful for, for, you know, as well as this channel has done. And like, most of you guys are just like the sweetest and the nicest. And it, we do have a lot of fun over here. But, like sometimes I, I just am like, I'm not, I'm not editing another video today. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up because I have just rambled for like 30 minutes at this point, but um yeah i think that's it for me for today and i will see you in my next one bye